So thank you, Thor, for uh, giving us a recount of your experience on the game day, and congratulations on being a part of the winning team. Um, that is the exciting part, and I'm literally, I can't, I can't find my slides, so. Um, yeah, we're doing it this way. And I'm, I just accept that. Yeah. Yes, enter new bug is definitely, is definitely on there, so. Um, so, um, what's that? Oh. Thank you. All right. There's the full screen button right there. Bottom center. Sorry, I kept my. Uh, I got to. There it is. Full screen. Right, right, right. There you go. Yeah, right. I broke my glasses yet, uh, yesterday. So, okay. So we start off the game as a, this is a game scenario, right? So the, the whole concept of the game itself is to ensure that we have a concept, a concept <laughs> and a part of the process, a part of, uh, um, and, a, and an idea for people to, um, to, to latch onto. So there's role play. And the concept of the role play is to get up and, and to just basically be the CFO of a startup, right? So you just walk up and you're like, you guys are all, you know, I don't know if you know it, but you were all fired from your jobs yesterday, and that's why you're here now, you know. And uh, then we give a little bit of information that's associated with the, uh, the experience, like, hey, we were running this company really great, but then a couple things happened, some people quit, like all of them, and then, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, we've started to get some, info, you know, some f customer feedback. Um, and the concepts there are uh, to get into the specific quests. Now, a quest has an objective, right? So in this case, what, what we wanted to do is create a social aspect. You want to make sure that you can create, generate uh, some sort of, of um, common application that can be shopped around to other teams. So if you want, uh, if you want a good experience, right, you want to build in that, uh, that connection, right? So what we do is we build a game. That game is then served out from, uh, from a, uh, like, I, in this case, an instance. We were using Red Hat Enterprise Linux on, on the Cloudy Hops. And then you're capable of playing the game, but then you're also capable of getting other people to play the game. And when other teams play the game, you get points. So you want to shop around and make sure that it happens. And <coughs> um, effectively, that gives the, uh, the, each one of the, the team members an opportunity to um, participate regardless of the level, right? So the reason you want the social aspect is because you're going to have people who have zero level experience with the products that you're trying to, to showcase, and you're going to have people who are expert level. And you want to make sure that you've got, you've covered, you know, the gambit of things that can be, uh, that can be associated. So that somebody has to choose a, so a more social role, they still can. And that kind of goes along, I mean, in, in my opinion, that goes along with the sentiments of the way that we handle most things in the open source community. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make sure everyone stays, stays included. This one, uh, so that was, this one, the Cloudy Hops, that's, uh, this has a uh, modified Flappy Bird in it, by the way, that, um, that has a, uh, uh, a red hat hat as the Flappy Bird. Right at the beginning, the red hat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. The, that's right. Hence these cu this customer experience, right? So good thing you were there. <laughs> and then this one, the goldfish. We actually did a. There was a Rick and Morty co concentration game, and we took the Rick and co Rick and Morty concentration game and then rebranded it as a, uh, a Red Hat concentration game. So we used a lot of Red Hat icons to, to build out this, the structure for it. Um, <clears throat> the, the way that those, uh, the way that that, you know, translates is 
you expose it on the on the um, open shift or like I mean in this case on a rail box, but uh, the concept is to expose that interface for uh, for access and then to make that social experience happen. Um, <clears throat> this game is built on Ansible and Ansible playbooks and uh, centers around the experience of having a merge conflict that you've got to figure out <laughs> how to <laughs> resolve um, in the in the uh, configuration. There's a team dashboard. The dashboard has all the information, provides the uh, the experience, and this is what it looks like. You end up with a, a, a hash on that screen uh, that takes you, that basically takes you to your own console. So once you put the hash in, you get a table number, which is so everybody can use that. Thor said he thought they should use one laptop uh, instead of having two laptops. The one laptop uh, would have the, you know, the team dashboard on it, but with two laptops, you can have the same team dashboard on two laptops. If you, four, if you have four players, those four players can do that. And the way that the, conf the, um, the event engine that we use is established, you can do that uh, with teams that are in different, different countries, <laughs> effectively, right? So the, the concept of the game day is not something that is localized. It's something that we can, in fact, bring to all of the um, the members of a team, even if they're not geographically located in the same same place. Um, <clears throat> when you log in, you end up with uh, access to the quest itself. And since um, I'm having trouble with my slides, um, the uh, the quest is effectively the part that y is the interaction for uh, the players. So we have a um, event engine. That effectively covers the whole thing, right? And then we have multiple accounts for each one of the team. Each team gets their own account. So for one table, so if you have, if you have, uh, you know, one table with four seats, and everyone is playing on this table. That's one one player account, right? So if you if you look at that, you would think about it as one AWS account. Now, the event engine has a master account. So this main account here includes all of the um, the requirements for the game. So you would see one. Cloud, uh, we, we do this with DevOps, of course. So you get one CloudFormation template that deploys the entire infrastructure for, uh, for the main account. And that main account becomes the, control, the command and control for the entire game. And then as a developer, as someone who is developing for the game day, you're you're building out a CloudFormation template that has all the the content in it. Now, for our internal games, right? This may uh, it, it would probably be um, more. This would be all that you would do. But for Red Hat, we've we determined that there are some things that we can't deploy in into the configuration here based on policy requirements. And so instead of just using the team accounts here, we're working with the demo team. And the demo team at, uh, at Red Hat has provided us the ability to stand up additional customer resources so that as we, uh, as we um, interface here, right, so this basically is an event loop right with a dashboard in it so so the dashboard um, the dashboard for the game is uh, is exposes the the um, the content from the cus the the team account 
to the um, to the main account. The main account then can do monitoring. It can do command and control uh, in the association, and then you get back a score. So, <clears throat> with all of this, uh, with all with the the way this works, we'll have um, we'll have resources here that are monitoring and managing the game. This is where your event engine is. So as, as the players make changes to each one of the individual quests, and the quests are actually here, deployed in the master, in this main account where the, the players don't have access. The players have access to all the resources that are down here. This is where you're deploying instances, and you're, you have different kinds of uh, um, of uh, applications running um, on top of having the ability to have an OpenShift configuration on this side <coughs> that's uh, deployed through Agnostic D. And if you haven't if you haven't seen Agnostic D, this is the tool that the demo team is using to create all of the configurations that they provide through the demo portal. So any of you who are looking to learn about services right on top on Red Hat would probably go to the dem demo portal. So you'll understand the infrastructure that we're using for the game because it is immediately available. So as a as someone who's wants to build a quest, if you want to build your own goldie fish, right, you would create a template using the, uh, the development kit. Now the development kit provides you an entire configuration that, that lives in, instead of in two accounts, right, instead of being set up in main and team, the, it combines the two so that as you're working, as you're making modifications to the, uh, to the configuration, like let's say you wanted to build out an OpenShift configuration on the demo portal, you build that out, it's successful, you deploy it, you deploy the infrastructure to support connecting to it, right, like instances that you can use through terminal or, um, or, a, uh, or through uh, a, um, a graphic display. You would then be able to take that um, that entire configuration and deploy it in a single account uh, while you're doing your development process. So what we do is we carry the development process in a single Git repository, and then that way we can split out what goes into the main account for c control, and we can split out what goes into uh, the team account into two different templates. <clears throat> Any questions so far? So, uh, one of the other things that we wanted to cover is scoring. Um, in the gameplay, we want to make sure that people are engaged and that the experience is something that makes them, uh, that they feel their progress. So you want to have various stages of scoring. Each one of the opportunities for, for building score can be greater or lesser. It all depends. Usually they're attached to actions. So um, if we go back to looking at the quest itself, these quests will have individual components. Like, <coughs> for example, the first thing you do in the, in the, um, uh, in the Cloudy Hops game is to identify the endpoint that the game will be uh, will be uh, served from, right? So that's identifying what the URI is for that specific server. When you identify what the URI is successfully, you get points, right? When you when that URI <laughs> when that URI is identified and the cloudy hops no worky. <laughs> then you get you get no points, so uh, so you have to determine exactly what parts what component parts are are um, are uh, functional what what are not, and then add hints. So 
Now, now that I know uh, that my score is um, is greater or lesser based on success, right? Then I can say uh, if I want um, if I want a score for an endpoint. So I, you gave me an endpoint. I give you a thousand points. You ask for a hint because you don't know what the endpoint is. I give you negative six, right? Something like that. And that's not that you know. This represents like a very small, uh, uh, um, uh, like a like a basic hint, right? And incrementally, you know that everybody's going to get a thousand points for the for the um, for the endpoint. But not everybody is going to really realize exactly what needs to happen to get that endpoint in place. So they're going to take one of those little hints. And then you, you, they, maybe they need a bigger hint and a bigger hint. And just that subtraction of like the smaller amount of points, you end up with uh, um, very interesting variations <laughs> on the scoring. Um, and we saw that yesterday. <laughs> it was was the first thing, th uh, was it you, Thor, who was like, how did we get, no, it was Marcel who said, how do we get negative points? <laughs> but it didn't matter, it got a couple million after that. So, so <laughs> um, and this represents like a, a first, so, you know, these are first attempts. Game complexity is, in, is in the next step in our process, right, is understanding that you have, if you've achieved one thing, that can't be the end of the game, right? We want this to go on. We want people to feel the the experience and the and the warmth of actual production, right? We don't want them to uh, to be able to rest. So, as you build out these quests, <laughs> we don't. We d no rest for you. That's right. Well, I mean, if you're going to win the game, come on. Like, if you're going to if you're going to main if you're going to maintain their attention and the commitment, there has to be some next level. And so what we do is we build out multiple layers for each one of the individual games. For uh, Cloudy Hops and, and uh, Goldie Fish, we don't have as many levels as we would like to have. We're working on that, right? So love to have your help in doing that. And then, uh, the so the complexity means you have to layer in more of the, uh, more of the, the company vision, right? So a lot of what we do there is, uh, so to add networking complexity, uh, we have a team, a security team we call Threat Slayer. And we use Threat Slayer for a lot of things. Like Threat Slayer comes in and actually has to, you know, has to um, apply policy. Um, and if you've ever worked in a cloud environment, there's identity access controls, there are firewalls, there are access control lists that are so independent of the, of the expectations of a, like a basic instance that the hunt can, you know, can be uh, quite complex in itself. So we add complexity with our um, metal band turned security team and uh, and we use other, you know, other uh, opportunities, natural disasters, complicated, uh, complicated, um, complicated action. So, <coughs> um, what we would like to have in that process is um, is something, some next level of complexity, so that those who are actually achieving at the lower levels can move upwards in that game. We can do a game day for sev up to 72 hours. So the more complex, the, the higher number of quests that we have, the easier it is for us to sustain in attention and entertaining entertainment value in those, in those 72 hours. It's he really helpful um, to, have, um, to have a goal in mind that is directly associated with a specific service. Uh, Cloudy Hops obviously is, a v is um, is structured around um, two things, which is just basic service enablement, right? And, uh, and um, uh, SE Linux controls. And then their container-based system has, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, the Goldie Fish 
configuration has a, uh, a goal of building container, a container-based system that is managed on your, uh, on, uh, on a rail work, uh, rail system, a rail server, with the added complexity of ensuring that you have uh, an Ansible playbook that is fully functional for the, for the uh, process. And building out and running the Ansible is kind of the, the, the strongest um, methodology that we want to we wanna pass through on best practices. But that doesn't mean that the winner is going to use that Ansible playbook. <laughs> and, and that is kind of one of the other things that I wanted to talk about is there's a seemingly random uh, pathway to success. And part of building out this game is discovering how people um, shortcut your your practices, um, and then uh, how that how that um, how how to score that right. So for us, the idea is to help people along in the context of the best practices. So and we know those they're observable, but that doesn't mean everyone is going to be able. To uh, is going to know exactly where to look. We were laughing about this yesterday. Is that there were there almost everything that we had. If you followed the, if you had gone to the rail the rail documentation, you actually would have found the steps to fix you know to fix the problem. But nobody went to the documentation. <laughs> so so. Uh, as a result, we saw a lot of di different things, and there was a we we had a, an interesting debate, you know, just just by, by having someone solve a problem in a way that was um, uh, non-standard. Uh, one of the the one of the teams uh, literally stood up secondary architecture and wanted to you know like rebuilt everything on CentOS Stream Seven, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then. Um, uh did a deployment, <laughs> and so the, deploy the deployment was uh, effective, it worked, but it didn't score them any points. And the interesting part of that was that this was, you know, because this happens in, in, a, in a cloud environment, one of the principles of building out cloud, cloud infrastructure is to remain lean, right? So they actually extended the architect, uh, they doubled the infrastructure requirement by standing up a secondary instance. So there was a question about whether or not uh, this was, you know, they had achieved the goal and, you know, we're, we, had, we s sort of stepped back, looked at it from both sides, tried to determine what we thought was right, and then just generally agreed that <laughs> this was an infrastructure mistake. <laughs> so, um, and that brings me to the score, like the scoring events themselves, are deterministic in that in the basic way, but then there is some room for us to identify and apply some changes to those to the to the point structure, just to make sure that if someone is working and they're discouraged or they don't understand, that doesn't stop them from getting some sort of an advance. You know that we you know to feel like they're still part of the game, and this is also a part of of the the structure and practice around this is that you have to build. Um, some compassion into the experience, otherwise um, you may lose your audience. And um, lastly, before we just start generally talking about it, or maybe I can show you some code, um, is, is the, the prize structure. So obviously this is unicorn rentals. And unicorn rentals uh, needs to have something that is m mildly representative of unicorn uh, of the unicorn experience, right? Um, so we try to put things together that are glittery and fun and pra not practical, um, <laughs> because uh, one of the things that is interesting about the game is the pl or the the thing that is interesting about the game is the play. And it shouldn't be a competition. It should be something where everyone is excited to participate, and everyone is is happy when when you know they finish and they uh, and they can um, 
they don't feel so heavily invested that there's a sense of fairness or, or, or complex, complexity in their, um, in their vision of the game. So we don't want you to, we don't want you to feel like you're, um, uh, you're missing out, right? Which is why we gave a baby unicorn and not a full-size unicorn to the winners this time. We rent them. <laughs> a lot of times, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a point that really made this business what it is today. <clears throat> so the prizes themselves need to be simple, and they need to be, uh, um, they don't need to be heavy investments. And, uh, my favorite one, my favorite prize to give out is having your name permanently uh, taped to a, uh, um, to a plastic unicorn statue. <laughs> okay, so um, with that said, configuration management is really the, the next step in this. And how we get to the configuration management is through what we call the Quest Development Kit. The Quest Development Kit has all the the things that go in the main account, right? And that's a bunch of Lambda functions and some, some uh, serverless configuration stuff that sets up all of the event-driven actions that come down here. So for Fargate, uh, we, you know, there's a bunch of containerized applications that we use to do this, and we build them out in a serverless infrastructure so that, there's, that it's fairly efficient. Um, this part is kind of hard coded. There's no, there's not a whole lot that you can change about how the events are are structured, but what events are act, are trigger uh, points and how those are evaluated is part of the quest experience that you would put in this uh, this uh, command account. The command account interacts and executes within the context of the, of the um, player account. So the player account is um, leveraged for anything that is, that the uh, user is, like the player is capable of doing. So if you, uh, if you wanted to have, I, Adam and I have talked about this before, if you wanted to have um, a full you know, a full open build system in the cloud, right? We would set up the open build in the team account, and then we would identify actions, notifications, that would then trigger, uh, at, trigger point scoring or identification of the, um, of the unlocking of specific tasks um, in the quest until we get to such a point that we, we feel like that, that section of the task has been completed. Once that's completed, uh, other things can happen. So a layer, a second layer can be activated at a later time, right? So as you build, you build one, and then you'll build a single action, and then you can build a secondary action, and a tertiary action, and n number of actions, right, after that, uh, that can be enabled in succession on that on that same quest. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the sky's the limit. Application space is built in Python, uh, but there is a TypeScript uh, version. So almost all of the work that you're going to do will either be in Python, uh, CloudFormation scripts, Ansible, or TypeScript. Although secondary actions, uh, like if you have something that's functional inside of an application, you can do it from there. Um, roadmap. So uh, we really enjoyed building out two rail server configurations for, uh, for the game day, but we are uh, focused on ensuring that we cover the gambit of um, RHEL products. 
so that we can make those available to um, to the uh, uh, to the general um, just generally. And we want to um, start with a modernization um, component. We have uh, we have a slot for a quest at. Uh, AWS reInvent this year, and we're really looking forward to that. And uh, we want that slot to be filled with um, a, uh, an OpenShift configuration. So we are working diligently on uh, building out support for the Quarkus Coffee Shop as a component part of the Unicorn uh, Games industry. Uh, we are working on uh, the Unicorn Cafe. So the Unicorn Cafe will be our, our next quest, and that will include some modernization steps to get an application onto OpenShift using, uh, using various components of the OpenShift uh, um, infrastructure, and we'll be uh, using that for, um, using that to, uh, secondarily extend that into space, which is our edge component. <laughs> so once we have a successful unicorn, ca unicorn cafe, we'll launch the unicorn cafe into space. <laughs> and we'd love... Can I ask a question before I go, though? Sure. Have you considered, um, like, Mario Kart mechanics? It would be really fun if you could do a blue shell and, like, you go Well, so in the early days of the game, uh, that happened a lot. Um, and it is quite possible. It is quite possible for us to take, it, to take that kind of action. So if you're, if you're um, uh, one of the things that we're doing here is we're creating that social, the social experience. And you can, you can bring that on. And then, and then, in fact, if you've got, let, like, let's say, let's say, you know, from, the from, your, from your main account, from your command center, your command center can make determinations based on anything. So like if one team had all, like if every other team was using one team as a, as a uh, central source for their game or for whatever it is, for whatever action, like we've, we've built reverse. So literally we have like applications that are just reversers, right? Like you just throw a, it just throws a, um, a, a word in, reverses the word, and then provides a hash, and so you get, you, the, the response is the hash and the reverse of the word, and the hash gets you points. Um, so if everybody was using the same reverser, right, so if the endpoint came from the same team, then you could probably, you could do something like hit the next level of the game, right, like destroy all of their networking, yeah. right? And so those, that is definitely a part of, part of the process. You can, you can make those modifications. So, um, the the kit will allow you to do that, and you can you can we can do that in all in the same you know consistently in a single account. Um, uh, the in terms of the technology that you can use the because we can, we're connected to the demo team we can use anything that's in the product suite uh, associated with Rail and and OpenShift and then uh, and actually we can extend that all the way up through the IBM suite. <laughs> so, plus everything that's associated with with uh, um, with AWS, of course, right? Like any any secondary service or connected service, we could do that as well. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how do you manage uh, to uh, transfer all these uh, events and uh, messaging? messages? Uh, like, have you been using some kind of messaging system for? Yeah. Well, of course. So, inside of Amazon, inside of AWS, the AWS infrastructure, there is a, a simple notification service. So, we use a simple notification service to cross into 
to cross from one account to another. And then we use a queuing system to identify, so, so that if there are messages that we need to, to carry into another application, we use a, what we call the simple queue service. And the simple queue service is, is there for that. A lot of it is also fired off of the, the some simple serverless, serverless applications. So there's Lambda functions and there are container-based workloads that uh, for, for larger scale decisions um, or chains of Lambda functions that, that in fact will we'll do, um, will process some of those events in a way that's consistent with the scoreboard and the game and update the databases that are associated. So there's like a bunch of Dynamo, like DynamoDB, there's not only SQL uh, configuration here. There's for the dashboard and for the users and for the hash hashes that are associated with the accounts. Um, <coughs> and um, that that is the way that you get uh, you get support for that continuous feedback. We also have on this side we have access to uh, streaming services, so we can use Kafka over here. We can use uh, standard message queue. Uh, on the on the demo side, so all of the work that we're doing that is connected to the the Red Hat uh, portal um, is is uh, communicates communications from here, and then we have an application endpoint. That application endpoint is something that's it's not shared, right? So this is strictly set for each team. So each team has their own environment, and that environment then. Um, is configured for uh, providing information to them, and then also feedback into the main into the main account. So as you make changes here, we use an we have an API that the the OpenShift configuration can call and make uh, uh, and and make change you know make updates or changes here. All all the basic cruddle. <laughs> uh huh. Anything else? Well, I'm excited for anyone to do to do the work. If uh, if you're interested, please drop us an email, um, and uh, we will um, uh, we will um, get back to you and make sure that you have everything you need in place to to work with us on the quests. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. So if we so um, yes, we we are we are breaking everything in a way that is consistent with how with how this works. And a little bit of history there is that uh, game day is based on the the application um, uh, that the way that we build applications like new services or new new um, region launches. We we establish a stress test uh, for Amazon. This is a, like a basic practice for Amazon is you set up a, uh, well, it's a basic practice for anybody who's deploying a service for themselves. But <laughs> you stress, we stress test pre pretty significantly, uh, test scale, test, um, test the application um, uh, um, sustainability and, and uh, resilience, and then uh, and then make determinations on what we need to change, right? So whatever failed, you know, you look at what failed, or you stress it, you look at what failed, and then and then uh, everything, you know, and then go back to the drawing board and figure out what you need to change in your design. Same thing here, uh, you stand it up, you get other people to use it, that, it, you know, then we will either simulate that, that there has been a failure based on that stress test, or we can, you know, in fact, we may have a stress that, uh, in, that like literally kills kills it right. You might have an auto scaling group that's too small or something like that, and then ultimately you would have to change it if you have enough people hitting your service right. So as a social as a social experiment, it can also be the thing that causes you to run into your own limitations. 
and then have to make an evaluation on what you're going to do next. Um, that is the, you know, that is the project plan. Now, the reason I wanted everybody to come to this talk was because I want them to think, to imagine those possibilities, to understand that from the perspective of being someone who develops a game and then takes that back and, and takes the, our development kit and provides us something that can fit into uh, the game experience or, you know, inside of the community-based products that are associated with, you know, uh, with the Red Hat ecosystem, uh, all the way up through, um, all the way up through the more advanced, uh, more advanced products, um, we chose to s to highlight Quarkus because we think that that's a very good fit for the OpenShift experience and targets um, some people that we think ha ha are a little bit more. Um, have a have a little bit less uh, experience around modernization, but really want to have more experience around modernization. So we think that they're they're going to be very excited about this, the next the next iteration of our games. <laughs> I'm glad you had a great time. Any other questions? Leave it, leave it at that then. Thanks.